Hey YouTube, Crazy Gamer Ninja talking here, uh, and welcome to uh, just basically a theory video about uh, Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Now I know the game isn't released, but everyone's kind of theorizing about this, and we've gotten a lot of teasers, and we've got our teaser trailer. So I just want to try and sum up what we have seen so far in both the teasers and the trailer itself. Um, first, I'm going to tackle the picture teasers first, and then second. We're going to tackle the video. The reason that I'm doing it uh, uh, individually is because it can get a little bit confusing if I try and attack both at the same time. So um, there might be some chatter about both the teasers and the video part and the video and the teaser part. But I won't go into too much depth unless I have to. But in any case, let's get started. Alright, so the first teaser that we're going to tackle is the, like the first teaser. Not the one that has... Uh, there was never just one, because I'm pretty sure that everyone's already figured out what that is, but I'll just go over it quickly. Basically, what it's saying is that there was never just one sister location. You had the original uh, Freddy Fazbear's Diner, but then you had the sister location to that, which was uh, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. And um, everyone thought that that was just the location, right? There was only two uh, Freddy Fazbear p places. But um, then we're introduced to another sister location, which looks to be centered completely on uh, a female audience. So, yeah, it's basically basically saying that there was never just one sister location to the original Fast Bear's Diner. So we're going to attack the first teaser that actually introduces us to the game itself, to a character. And um, in this case, everyone's calling her Baby, which she totally isn't. She looks like a clown, let me tell you. Don't get me wrong, and just don't judge me, but I am terrified of clowns. I never used to be, but then, ugh, I just watch one too many horror movies, but she looks more like a clown rather than a baby, but everyone also thinks that she might be Minnie Rena or something because she has a tutu on her, but no, Minnie Rena is probably that creepy little ballerina that has the, nah, I'm not going to get into that just yet, but... The first teaser, it's saying that everyone, please stay in your seats. Now, the reason that the teaser might say that is because if you look into the video and you see her uh, baby, I'll have to call her baby from here on out, having like a little spaz attack at the end of the video, I just kind of thought to myself, well, no wonder why they told you to stay in your seats, because like, they look to be almost out of control. Like, baby seemed to be the only one that was out of control in that scene, but you never know if the other animatronics might have that uh, tendency to uh, spaz out or their wires might be on the fritz or something, but there's not much to this first teaser other than the fact that you see Baby, who seems to be the lead singer, and that little uh, bit at the bottom that says, everyone please stay in your seats. There's not much to go off of here, so we're just gonna head right on over to the next teaser. So the next teaser that came out was the one with that creepy, mangled-looking animatronic. At the bottom of the screen, it says, There's a little of me in every body. Now, at first, I thought nothing of it. I thought it was just a grammatical error by Scott Cawthon. But then, it kind of made me think a little bit after watching Smike. And yes, I agree with him. It is very odd that it says there's a little of me in every body. Um, I'm just going to kind of go with what he said here, and this animatronic might be used for scraps because there's a lack of a body for this thing. However, it's really odd that it seems to be activated and that it's still able to move around a little bit. Um, but what I also find very, very creepy is the fact that its its right eye is out of place and it's silver rather than red. So it might, yeah, I think what Smike said is probably true that this thing was used for scraps because if it's already falling apart then they're probably not going to try and throw it out they're going to try and uh reuse it now um i think scott might have kind of recycled the idea of mangle in this case because mangle was all taken apart and put back together by the children and um it might be the same case for this animatronic here it might be that the animatronic was uh, poorly used or poorly treated, and then it ended up uh, being able not to be used, or being unable to be used, and so it might have been thrown out for scraps, it might be used for spare parts for other animatronics in case they needed repairs, but uh, I, 
I'm going along with Smike in this case. There's a little of me in every body. So, um, it also kind of looks like it has a, it just looks kind of demonic in a sense. So, it might also be, a, have a sense of irony in there that there might be a little bit of that, that, uh, demonicness, that, uh, creepiness, I guess I should say, in every animatronic that's there. Um, this kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, the marionette as well. Uh, the statement reminds me of the marionette because, um, it was suspected that it was the marionette who gave life to, uh, the animatronics, who kind of put all the spirits into the animatronics, which I still think is completely false. There's no possible way for that. Um, like, the souls themselves could have haunted the animatronics, but there's no way that the marionette could have, uh, assisted with that. But, uh, in any case, let's not try to get into the original Five Nights at Freddy's. We're focusing on sister location. Um, other than that, there's not really too much to go off of this. Once you brighten up the screen, there isn't any secrets or anything. You can only see the things endoskeleton and, uh, the teeth. The teeth are just crazy ridiculous. It's really, really creepy, um, that an animatronic would have such sharp teeth. I don't know if the sister location maybe has a horror attraction in it or something, but, um... Yeah, I uh, I don't know what else to say about this animatronic, so we're going to move on to the next teaser. Now, this next teaser I actually discovered just today when I was going back to uh, try and save a picture of the Don't Hold It Against Us teaser uh, for this video. And then all of a sudden, I just see this, this teaser. It was really, really weird, um, uh, and it kind of tipped me off that... Uh, all, the entire background was dark, so I immediately got to brightening it, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, it just says, get back on your stage now. Um, I find that a little bit odd. It makes it seem like someone's trying to talk to someone or something to get back onto the stage. It might be that, like, of course, throughout the entire Fine Nights of Freddy series, you have been the, uh, the security guard. And, um, you might be another security guard here for Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Um, uh, uh, get back on your stage now. So it might be the, uh, it could be, like, an the owner of the location. It could be the security guard. It could be, uh, just someone who might know the secrets of the sister location. You're telling these animatronics to get back on the stage now. Uh, the power box, I think, is, is a little bit odd because you have a lightning bolt and then you have a light bulb. I'm not entirely sure what these two things could mean, but you have two different antennas, so that could mean two different signals. Um, one of them could be a power button, the other one could be like an activation button. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. Um, yeah, the two antennas, you don't know which one is linked to what, and, um, like, the lightning bolt is commonly associated with, like, a power button, but it could mean something else entirely. Now, the blue one, it looks like a light bulb, almost. It almost looks like, like, a blinking light bulb. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that one. But, uh, when I brightened up the screen here, it almost tipped me off, because if you brighten up the screen, you see a stage, and you see almost a circular or oval or semicircular. Uh, arch above a bunch of ballerinas. Um, I find that really creepy because in the trailer you only saw one animatr one ballerina animatronic, and everyone's thinking that's a uh, Ballora or Mini Rena. I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. But um, to think that there are more ballerinas could be a little bit creepy because I remember actually watching another video with some other Five Nights of uh, Freddy theor theorists. Um, and they thought that, uh, Ballora's eyes could be deadly. In the trailer, you see that she has a line, so her eyes could open, but in the trailer, you don't see her eyes opening. I'm not gonna get too much into that. Um, so, uh, there's the thought that her eyes could be deadly, and to think that there are more of her, it's, it's a little unsettling to see that. And, um, it's really unsettling to see that it's get it back on your stage now, so those ballerinas could have the ability to just completely move around. And, um, uh, I, I don't know what to make of this. It's just really creepy. It's a little unsettling to see the get back on your stage now and to see more ballerinas. I would have expected that with, like, the little, uh, baby animatronic things. But no, instead you see it with a bunch of ballerinas. And, um, 
I don't know what to make of that. What do you guys think of that little power box there? What do you think it could mean? What do you think it could do? Or maybe it's a way to keep the animatronic stationary. Uh, the, the lightning bolt could be uh, powering them on or maybe frying their circuits to keep them from moving. And maybe like the blue one could be, I don't know, an activation or turning turning the lights on. That's probably what it means because you got a circle and then you got those lines that means something's turned on and you see a stage and then you see that semi uh, semicircle and it looks like it has lights on it. So maybe the lights keep the ballerinas there. Uh, I don't I don't know. What do you guys think? But anyways, now that we've tackled all of the teasers and all of the teaser pictures, we are immediately moving on to the trailer itself. Okay, now we're on to the Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location teaser trailer. Uh, I'm not able to get video footage of the trailer, so I just took a bunch of screenshots, and we're just going to go off of that. Um, so the first scene that you were shown in the Sister Location teaser trailer, uh, like the first area, is that it looks like you're in some form of an elevator, um, which I do highly doubt is an elevator, because if you look in the trailer, you see what looks like a fan circulating above the room. And um, I doubt an elevator has a fan like that. Um, it... It does kind of look like uh, the room is moving if you look out in the windows, but why would an elevator have a fan like that unless it's like an emergency escape route or something? But elevators are supposed to be closed roofed and they're supposed to have an emergency exit hatch, but they are not supposed to be open like that. I think it's a little bit dangerous to have a fan up there because if someone were to try and climb up, they could easily chop their head off or something. That'd be really disgusting. Um... But maybe that is somewhere that could be a spot where an animatronic could get in because um, a f the fan could easily turn off and an animatronic could crawl through the roof and it could get you. Um, one thing I want you guys to notice is that if you look off to the far left, you can see a speaker. I'm not sure what that's for. I'm not sure if that's served as, uh, serving as a PA system or something or it could be the phone guys coming back. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. Also, if you look off to the far right, first of all, you do see a picture of uh, Ballora, which I still am really freaked out by. Um, you also see a keypad and a button, so maybe um, if you type in a certain code or something, or I don't know what to make of it. It could be uh, a keypad to open the door. Uh, the red light, I'm not sure what to make of that either. But below the keypad and the red light or the button or whatever, you can see a vent. Uh, perhaps Mike was also right in that assumption that the ventilation systems is returning, is coming back. Uh, and it could be adjoining two different rooms. We're going to move on here into the room with the creepy balloon boy and the creepy little monkey thing. If you look below the panel, you can see two different ventilations as well. And I'm not sure if that little... Uh, thing in the center is an open ventilation shaft or not. But yeah, Smike might be correct in that assumption and that there is a new ventilation system uh, in the game and that you might be able to crawl through it to get to two different rooms. Um, but I, if that's true, then I'm, I find that rather creepy because there's a possibility of an animatronic coming through the vent and getting you. And oh, that would just be so unexpected. That'd be really, really scary. But um, if we look in the room with the, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that, what to call it. I I'm just going to call it a little desk. But it almost looks like a sound room almost because you've got yet another speaker. You've got another keypad with what looks like another button. And um, you just got a bunch of flips and switches and wires or vents, I guess I should say it is. Or maybe it's a pressurization room like in uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Because uh, with the pipes there, it could be that air is going through there and through the ventilations. Um, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, but it's also really weird that there's pipes going into like a computer desk type thing. And it looks almost mechanical. You've got uh, a speaker there. You've got... it. I'm sorry, it just looks like a sound room almost. If we look at that creepy little uh, thing... Eh on the uh on top of the little desk there he almost seems to look like a magician maybe he's a little prize that you can win or something 
or he was an animatronic from one of the other sister locations. If you do look up to the top left, you see what looks like Balloon Boy. Now, everyone is thinking that it isn't Balloon Boy, which, I, which is actually not far from the truth. It isn't Balloon Boy, but it could be just another version of Balloon Boy. A lot of people are also thinking that it's Balloon Girl, which, or JJ, I, they call her JJ, don't they? Um, which is actually is false, because if you look closely, you can see that it's blue in coloration and possibly looks like a red bow. Uh, it looks like another puppet, too, because it's hanging on the wall, and it almost looks like it's being hung there by strings. Um, in the next screenshot here, I managed to catch a glimpse of whoever uh, whoever's point of view you're looking through. He actually specifically looks up at the balloon boy and um you can't see it too well but it does look like it's being attached by strings um you do actually get a better look of the animatronic itself it's really hard to tell if the thing has a red nose or not but um yeah you can see on the knee joints and the elbow joints and the shoulder joints that it is circular so that could mean that it is actually a puppet of some sort that was probably meant for the show, or it could have uh, uh, been tossed out because it was useless or something. Uh, this could be a different version of Balloon Boy. It might not be Balloon Boy himself. It won't definitely isn't the Balloon Girl. It's probably just another version of Balloon Boy. Uh, you can also see that there's just one button rather than two, so that is a confirmation that it isn't the Balloon Boy because... Uh, I do think that in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, he was actually burned uh, when the uh, when the attraction went down. But uh, anyways, on to the next screenshot here. Um, the first animatronic that you see is that Funtime Foxy. Now, the first thing I want to tackle here is that reflection in her cheek. Everyone thinks that it's the puppet because you got a bit of red, you got the lines, and you got what looks like eyes. But, um... Excuse me, it cannot be the puppet because in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, all of those phantom animatronics, they were like apparitions and possibly like visions of the future because the uh, the attraction itself burns down and it burns almost everything with it. So um, that includes the Chica, that includes the Freddy, it includes Foxy. And it definitely includes Mangle and the marionette. The marionette was burned along with them. Uh, Balloon Boy was also burned with them, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, they were all burnt down uh, in that attraction. Springtrap, it is questionable because if you look in the final uh, uh, scene, like if you look in the ending where it says that everything's being auctioned off and if you brighten it up, you do see Springtrap in the background. So it is... Uh, still being questioned as to whether or not Springtrap is alive or dead. But I'm just saying this now. That reflection in Funtime Foxy's cheek is not the the puppet. It's not the marionette. It can't be. Um, another thing I kind of want to point out with Funtime Foxy is her teeth. Once again, at a children's attraction, why are the teeth so sharp? Like, I don't get it. And, uh... As the scene kind of moves on, you can see the eyes f suddenly following you. Uh, and that reflection in her cheek does not change. I still find that creepy, but it is not uh, the marionette, once again. Um, moving on to the next uh, screenshot here of another animatronic. You see Ballora or Mini Rena or something. I don't know. I'm going to call her Ballora from here on out. Um, if you look closely in the lower reflection of her cheek... You can see inside her animatronic suit, and you can see that little endoskeleton piece there, which I find a little bit disturbing. But onto the next screenshot here, you see when her face moves, you can see, like, inside her face, you can see uh, her teeth. And um, this made me think back to the first teaser that said, everyone, please stay in your seats. It's just like, yeah, no wonder if all of the animatronics have spaz attacks like Baby does then, um, yeah, I can see why people were meant to stay in their seats because they don't want to get bit or hurt, right? Like, who in their right minds in a children's attraction would have sharp teeth on an animatronic? That is just mental. I also find it a little bit creepy, too, because, uh, 
if you're ending up meeting Blora or Baby or anyone in the ventilation systems when you're crawling through them to get to the other room, then, like, you're gonna have your face chomped off, man. Like, it's just really mentally disturbing. On to the next screenshot, we see that Funtime Freddy, uh, if we look into it, her, into her jaw, you can see that second set of teeth, like everyone was looking at in uh, the first FNAF game. Everyone was just like, oh, why is there a second row of teeth on all the animatronics? Well, it's also on these animatronics as well, because you have the teeth that is on the uh, head of the animatronic itself, but then the endoskeleton also has teeth, which I find a little bit odd, yes, granted, but, um, uh, you know, what can you do about it, right? That's all I can really speculate about this one. And on to the next screenshot here, you can also see that the Funtime Freddy's eyes and practically whole head followed you. Um, I find that a little creepy. Um, on to the next screenshot here. I'm gonna get into the poem a little bit here. Uh, when it says, Anger is Restless, I found it a little ironic that when you go onto Baby's hand, that, um... When they were focused on Baby's hand, that it was right after the anger is restless because she shifted her fingers. Like, when you see in the TV shows or the movies when someone is angry and holding a weapon, they shift their fingers a little bit to tighten the grip on it and not to lose the grip, right? So, uh, it, it, it's a gesture of anger, and I found that a little ironic. I couldn't help but point that out. Um... In the next screenshot here, you're seeing all of the animatronics becoming revealed. Um, with the Funtime Foxy, I remember Smike speculating on that little circular thing on her chest. Now, I wish to say this now, those circular things are speakers. They could be meant as speakers. Because, um, you gotta have something for the animatronics to speak through, right? And a speaker would be, uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, we also gotta think, too, this looks pretty high-tech, so this could be in, uh, the far future, or it could be... Uh, just another version of the animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's 2 because they are all Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, uh, Mangle, and I'm really beginning to think that Mangle is the Funtime Foxy, I'm not entirely sure. But, um, you have the Mangle, which is also Toy Freddy, or Toy Foxy. Uh, I think this just might be kind of like a copycat version of Five Nights at Freddy's 2 animatronics, I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, in the next screenshot, we are, uh, seeing Ballora here, or Mini Rena. I don't know what to call her anymore. You see Ballora, uh, you see her face shifting, yes, but you don't see her eyes opening at all during the scene, and that's really beginning to solidify what those, uh, YouTubers said. I, I'm gonna have to find out, uh, who they are. I keep forgetting who they are, but, um, her eyes could be deadly to look into. I'm not entirely sure. Um... In the next screenshot here, you see Funtime Freddy, and if you look there closely too, you see a puppet on Funtime Freddy's hand. So, uh, it was actually Bonnie that was the puppet on her hand. It could be like what Smike said as well, uh, Funtime Freddy could be like a replacement for Chica or something, because Chica had the cupcake, and I really hate that cupcake, it's creepy. Um, but what I find really weird is that you see... The Bonnie, like, it was the original Bonnie that you see on Funtime Freddy's hand. So, um, this sister location could be, uh, the location that was around when Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was. Uh, it could be taking ideas from that place, it could be... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to make of it, because you've got, like, the toy likeness of the Five Nights at Freddy's two animatronics... But then you also have the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 Bonnie, but as a puppet on Funtime Freddy's hand. Um, it's a little weird. Um, I'm not entirely sure what to make of it, but, you know. Oh, and she still has a little top hat, too, which I find a little cute and a little creepy at the same time. And Funtime Freddy also has one of those speakers on her. Uh, you can see if it's on Ballora or not, because she's kind of covered by Baby's pigtail. But, um, next screenshot, we are seeing... Uh, baby for the first time and if you kind of look at her face you can see she has a lot of individual sections in which her face can open and I found that a little bit creepy that she seemed to be the only animatronic that had uh, detailed openings in her face um, I'm not entirely sure why any of the animatronics have movable parts on their face if like that could scare kids that could scare little kids if they see like a creepy little skeleton like thing uh, in the animatronic I still don't get why some of these animatronics even have such sharp teeth in the first place. 
In the next screenshot, I found this a little odd that Baby seemed to be the only animatronic whose eyes glowed. It was very creepy. Um, if you look at the ending too, if you get just the right frame, you can see in the dark, Baby's eyes glowing. I'm not sure why her eyes light up. I'm not sure why they do that. I, I can't speculate too much on that. But I found that very, very creepy. And in the next screenshot here, not an image for the queasy, let me tell you. It scared me the first time I saw it. Uh, I just managed to get this little frame here. Uh, you can see Baby's face completely opened up. You can see the endoskeleton underneath. And I find that a little bit disturbing that you can see all of that because if she has spaz attacks on the stage, once again, it solidifies that the children can become easily terrified by this. If she has spaz attacks on stage whenever the people are there, that can cause some issues. Maybe that's why, uh... Hold on, I'm actually gonna get into that in a moment. I just wanted to share that with you. Now, we're gonna tackle the poem that's in... The trailer here. So first part of the poem says deep below ground and then where memories sleep, anger is restless and secrets don't keep. Now uh, that poem itself is really really scary but uh, the first part of the poem let's tackle. It says deep below ground. If we go back to that one image of the the first picture of the first area that you see, um, it could be, yes, maybe an elevator, or it could just be another room that you go into. I'm still not sure that that's an elevator at all, because an elevator would not have a fan above it. I'm just, I just keep thinking that, and it's just not possible. But yes, this could be an underground theme, because if we go to the next part, uh, deep underground where memories sleep. So that kind of solidifies what I was just about to say with baby's face opening and spasm. If that was a, a major case with all of the animatronics where they had like circuit overload or whatever happened to make them spaz like that, it could have scared too many children. Something could have happened to a child or even an adult uh, where an animatronic could have harmed someone. And then the sister location got shut down and they were stored underground. So deep underground where memories sleep. So the memories of anything bad or good that could have happened is buried deep below ground, so, uh, like, no one can find it, or they're just forgotten. And the next part of the poem says, anger is restless, and then it says, and secrets don't keep. So the anger is restless, it could be that something happened to the animatronics themselves, or we could have another, uh, murder of children that happened, uh, which I actually would be rather disappointed in because it's just a re constant recycling of uh, of the idea of children being murdered. Um, I'm not entirely sure if Scott's going to keep going with that idea or if the sister location is going to have an entirely new plot on its own. But the anger is restless and secrets don't keep. Um, in the trailer, you constantly hear the don't hold it against us. And then at the end, you hear uh, you don't know what we've been through. So maybe the animatronics are trying to tell you something. They're angry about something, but they're not meaning to hurt anyone. Uh, uh, they're trying to tell you what might have happened to them or what might have happened to like any spirits of the children. Once again, if Scott continues to go with that idea, uh, that you don't know what we've been through. So don't hold it against us. We're sorry that we're scaring you. We're sorry that we're hurting you or hurting anyone. Uh, don't hold it against us. Don't hold what we did against us because you have no idea what happened to us. You don't know what we have been through. Uh, I might be overanalyzing that entire sentence, but um, um, that's kind of what I first thought when I heard the whole thing. And then when I analyzed the poem as well. So the deep below ground, where memories sleep, anger is restless, and secrets don't keep. So deep underground... Everything could be stored where memories sleep. So any bad memories or any good memories or any memories of at all of the sister location are buried deep below ground. And the anger is restless. So anything that happened to, once again, the spirits of the children or whatever happened to the animatronics, they might be angry about something. Angry that they, the people who might have shut them down thought that it was the animatronics' fault that... 
uh, they weren't trying to listen to them. Like, they might have been trying to tell people something if they were ever having those spaz attacks, right? It's just like, or if they saw, like, the murderer hanging around, that it couldn't, could have been just like, hey, he's right there, and then a spaz attack happens, so the anger is restless, and secrets don't keep. I still think that it's the animatronics trying to tell you a secret, or trying to tell you something about what happened to them, or it might be uh, just another air mystery that Scott might have put into it that there's an investigator going into the sister location trying to figure out about any murders of the children or something, if he's going with that idea once again. So you could be like an investigator rather than a security guard trying to, trying to discover the secrets of the sister location. So it's deep below ground where the investigator, investigator could be going to where there's a storage area our memories sleep. Anger is restless and secrets don't keep. So, yeah, I'm I'm really starting to go with that investigator idea lately. Um, like, how else would the secrets not keep? Because of everything stored below ground, where all of the memories sleep, so they're resting, and uh, they're not meant to be disturbed. Anger is restless and secrets don't keep. Because the secrets were all kept down there, the memories of what happened are all kept down in that little storage area. The animatronics or the spirits of the children have become so angry that they weren't being listened to. And then the end secrets don't keep. So someone might be trying to discover what happened there at the sister location. Um, that's actually my entire analysis of the trailer and the teasers themselves. Sorry for the long rant and if I didn't make sense in some areas, but... That's literally all that I can think of from the teasers and the video itself. Like, it could be that you're an investigator or you're just another security guard trying to keep track of all of the animatronics that are down there or trying to keep the sister location safe or something. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where Scott's going to go with it. We gotta wait until another trailer comes out or another teaser to try and figure out everything. But, uh, man, that new teaser, though, that is crazy ridiculous and just crazy creepy, too. I really don't like Ballora in the first place, but to think that there's more ballerinas, I'm not, I'm not too happy. I'm not too keen to see where Scott's gonna go with that. Um, it's looking very interesting so far, though. It's looking interesting to see where he's going with all of this. Um, and it might just possibly be, me, might possibly be more scary than any of the other... Five Nights at Freddy's games, and um, I'm actually eager to see where Scott's going with this. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this uh, theory video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, add this video to your favorites if you liked it, leave a comment, tell me what you thought. Uh, also be sure to try and tell me any of your own theories. Uh, uh, I'm up to see what you guys may be thinking about all the teasers in the trailer itself, if you agree, if you disagree, if you have another theory to... Uh, go along with, or to uh, kind of smack down my own theory there. I'm eager to see what you guys think about all this. Um, be sure to share this video with other people, too, who might be interested in this. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you all next time. Bye!